Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skjone here in the very south of the country. Now, we're returning to a brewery that has featured on the channel a number of times before. We've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different styles, but I would say that this brewery are still best known for the different kinds of IPAs. They also do a very nice lager in my experience, but in more recent times they have been producing some kind of stronger and darker beers as well which have gone down very well but the beer we're looking at today is kind of a collaboration brew but it kind of isn't at the same time we'll explain why a little bit later on in the video but it is actually a new version of one of their beers that we've re reviewed on the channel quite recently they've released two new versions of this one and we are going to review both of them going forward actually so this is the first of a kind of two-parter I guess you could see as well but the original beer was very nice and these two new versions of it have had very good write-ups it's a style that I haven't had all that often from this brewery but uh, yeah if this one is as good as the original beer then I think it will make for quite an interesting review so needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So, uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to Malmö, a little bit to the south of me here in Lund, maybe about 20 minutes or so. And we're going to have a look at another beer from Hylia Brewery. So this particular beer is once again called Nyctophobia. This version comes in at 11% ABV. It's an Imperial Stout. And this is the new Bourbon Barley's edition. So, uh, yeah, this is, of course, one of the beers that Julia Brigley have released under their more experimental brand of uh, Cycle Pipes. This is only the second beer we've reviewed from Cycle Pipes on the channel, actually. But, yeah, if memory serves me correctly, this beer was released as part of the local Osmoska League Assortment through System Volaget here in Sweden for January of 2023. But like I say, this is one of two new versions of Nyctophobia. The other one is a whiskey barrel aged edition, but this one is bourbon. So uh, yeah, very curious to see what this is gonna have in store for us. So let's crack on and see what we have. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Hulia Brewery before, and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember that you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer based on the geography tagging system. So just go up to the search bar, put your hometown, state, county, prefecture, whatever you like in there. If I've reviewed beers from your local area, they should pop up. Failing that, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and you will find this one in the Swedish playlist, of course. And there are many other playlists from different countries there that are worth checking out too. But uh, yeah, let's get on there and chat a little bit about Hulia Brewery and we'll also mention their uh, more experimental brand of Cycle Pipes as well. But yeah, the first of a two-part series of reviews, this one, I guess we could say. But anyway, uh, Hulia Brewery started off as the home brewing experimentations of Michael Nathorst, who is from Vintria, a few minutes to the south of Hulia, in the kind of southwestern part of Malmö. But for a number of years, he was also a home brewer, and he built up his own brewery in his garage, where he experimented with different kinds of beers, and he was practicing brewing with his friends. But he started this project back in around 2013. So he worked for a number of years in the plumbing industry, and for a period of time, he was working for four days a week as a plumber, and then one day with the brewery. But he was also good friends, or is good friends, with Torsten Ekne, who is the original owner of the Beer Ditch Bar in Malmo. And when Beer Ditch began, Michael actually decided that at this point he would turn his garage brewery into a fully functional company. And it was at this point that he registered Huya Brewery back in 2015 under the, uh, I guess, under the advi advice of uh, Torsten, which is kind of cool. Uh, but these days, Michael is joined at the brewery by Eric Fritjof, who is a partner in the company and deals with the sales and marketing side of things. He's also one of the founders of the Great Swedish Beer Festival. And in 2017, they launched their Cycle Pipes brand at Brewski Val, which is one of the biggest 
uh, craft beer festivals in uh, in Scandinavia. You'll find that in Helsingborg, maybe about an hour to the north of uh, of Malmo, where these guys are based. But it's under Cycle Pipes that they release most of their kind of experimental beers. But like I say, the original Nectophobia was the first one. I reviewed from the Cycle Pipes brand. But in 2019, uh, Julia and Limham's Brewery collaborated to form a new company that owns a brewery building, and it was there that the, the, uh, the two companies were brewing their beers together. They had a 1,000 litre brew kit, but this arrangement unfortunately only lasted for a couple of months. It just really didn't work out for them. And so Julia Brewery moved out and went to a farm in Fintria and uh, started brewing their beers there, as well as brewing some things under contract brew, I believe, at Brukeset Fien in Landskrona, a little bit further north. Uh, but throughout 2020, they continued to contract brew a number of their beers while they were investing in a new premises in Malmö. So this premises was, of course, Stormgatan, very close to the central station. It was actually a, a car parking place, and uh, they've basically renovated it all and turned it into a fully functional brewery. So they have a 2,000 litre brewing system there, and at this point they recruited Johan Lagerkrantz to come in as their head brewer, and he had spent the last couple of years working in New Zealand as a brewer. They opened up their tap room at this site as well, just a little bit after that, and it's been very successful from what I understand. But as of January 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 115 different kinds of beer, and they've also released around 40 different things under the Cycle Pipes brand, which I believe have been mainly uh, keg beers rather than uh, in cans or bottles or anything like that. So yeah, we need to see about reviewing some more of the Cycle Pipe stuff going forward actually. But uh, yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about Julia Brewery and the Cycle Pipes brand. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can of course check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's go on then and actually have a taste of this beer. So yeah, the interesting thing about this one is it's not actually that much stronger than the original Nyctophobia. Um, I'm not sure if they brewed a second batch of this uh, to barrel age or exactly what they did with it, but I think the original one that we reviewed was like 11.5% ABV, but this bourbon barrel aged edition is only 11%. Uh, this is a little 330 milliliter can, of course, and you can see it's just a plain silver top. But yeah, this is one of these Red Bull cans. You can see the um, Julia Brewery symbol on the top there, and then the Cycle Pipes uh, symbol under there. But yeah, really nice to present it. It pretty much looks the same as the um, the, the original Nyctophobia that we reviewed for you a few videos ago. But uh, yeah, apparently, uh, it says on the untapped page that this has been aged in Spirit of Ven casks. Uh, and I have to admit, I didn't know that Spirit of Ven actually did a bourbon. I thought it was only kind of whiskey that they, uh, that they distilled. But um, for those of you who don't know, Spirit of Ven are a distillery based on the island of Ven, which is just off of Landskrona, where Tycho Brahe did a number of his uh, astronomical observations. So quite an interesting place. But yeah, this one, as we said at the start of the video, it's an 11% bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. The original Nyctophobia was a proper old school. Uh, Russian Imperial Stout and I really enjoyed it, thought it was very well done. So I'm quite curious to see what these barrel-aged versions are going to have in store for us. But uh, yeah, the first of two, this one the bourbon and we do have the whiskey cask one to take a little look at in a future video too. If memory serves me correctly, I paid 70 Swedish kroner for this beer. So that is about uh, 7 euros, £6.50 sterling, somewhere in the region of like $8 American, something like that just for those of you watching in different parts of the world. But yeah, 11% bourbon barley East Imperial Stout. Let's get this guy out into the glass and see what it's all about. So yeah, hopefully this one is as good as the original. But yeah, there we are. Very quickly out and into the glass. So let me just make that look nice and pretty for the video. But anyway, as you can see, this beer is poured pretty much as you would expect from a big Imperial Stout. So before the head disappears, because it probably will quite quickly, I can say that this one is poured with just under a quarter finger of a frothy, kind of dark, uh, 
tan head I think it goes together quite nicely that has of course faded away to just be a very thin foamy layer there's just a few kind of wispy bits across the surface of the beer but then yeah you've got that nice ring around the edge of the glass but you guys can have a little look at that and see that there are some nice kind of smaller bubbles toward the surface of the beer and a few bigger ones just up toward the top but it does look very very nice um, the colour of the beer is pretty much as I remember the original one. This is as black as you're going to get. Black as night. So uh, yeah, lovely dark kind of ebony rosewood colour to this one. If we shine the light through it, you maybe get a tiny little hint of a kind of Pepsi Max, Coca-Cola coloured edge to it. But yeah, this beer is uh, pretty much as dark as you're going to get, which isn't out of character for an Imperial Stout, of course. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a dark coloured beer. But any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect that as well. But otherwise, uh, yeah, the, when it comes to an imperial stout, it's very difficult to change the colour of these because you've got the presence of like black malt or special bee or whatever it is that you decide to put in your malt base. So uh, yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there just at the bottom. And a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. But overall, this beer looks pretty much as you would expect of an Imperial Stout. So uh, yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Oh yeah, <laughs> that does smell very, very nice. Now from what I remember, the original Nyctophobia was quite... Um, it was like quite a heavy, roasty, toasty uh, Imperial Stout in this one. Um, yeah, it was kind of like a, a nice roasty and toasty Imperial Stout, but at the same time, it kind of sweetened up and mellowed out the more that we drank of it. This beer as well, you can still get that vibe out of it, but you can obviously smell the nice bourbon barrel aged uh, character in the background. And it just, it smells absolutely lovely. This is going to just be a little sipper beer that we'll have over the next wee while, of course. But yeah, this one gives you everything you want. You've got a little bit of the woody character. You've got the bourbon in there. The roasty, toasty brown sugars, the kind of caramelised, um, yeah, the caramelised brown sugars. And also the, the kind of just sweeter fruity notes out of it too. It smells lovely. But let's try and break this down and just describe it for you a wee bit more. Kind of, uh in depth if you like so yeah first off then the backbone of the beer is unquestionably that lovely sort of smooth uh, American oak and for me the main difference between the American and the European oak has always been um, it's always been just that the European oak to me always strikes me as being a little bit drier but the American oak is a little bit smoother and a little bit more kind of vanilla uh, infused if we can say that but yeah you can smell the lovely kind of smooth american oak in this one the little bit of vanilla in there and then you've got the bourbon sugars on top of it like i said i didn't know that spirit of ven did uh bourbon i tried to have a little look for it on sea stemble agate but couldn't uh couldn't really find anything but as i say the um you know spirit of ven are doing gins and everything so it really wouldn't surprise me if they're doing like an american style bourbon but yeah lovely smooth woody character in this one a little bit of vanilla in there of course you've got the bourbon sugars on top of that and then you have the actual stout itself which is uh, which is really kind of interesting but on the um on the kind of roasty toasty uh, backbone of this beer it's it's quite interesting too because you're still getting that big roasty toasty character that the original nectophobia had so definitely a wee bit of a well-fired bread crust in there, but it still comes across as quite smooth at the same time. I suspect in the actual flavour of the beer, we'll get a bit more of the dryness out of that character. But yeah, roasty toasty. Um, yeah, roasty toasty. Well-fired bread crusty backbone. On top of that, you've got a lot of sweet, like alcohol, uh, booze soaked, sweet rye bread in there. So yeah, well-fired bread crust sweet booze soaked rye bread it's almost a little bit cakey this beer as well you've got that big kind of christmas puddingy type quality coming out of it so yeah nice big kind of christmas puddingy sort of thing the well-fired bread crust then yeah i think the sweet rye bread on top of that to be honest with you 
and then um yeah there's a little hint of like a I do get a little touch of a kind of wholemeal brown bready character as well and then you've got the brown sugars kind of sitting on top of that so you can smell with this one um it does actually have quite a little bit of a a more leathery brown sugary character to it which is, is kind of interesting i'm trying to remember whether the original had uh, that same quality but this one for me strikes me as having a little bit more of a kind of leathery brown sugary type quality to it and that usually indicates the the presence of a slightly longer warp boil when you've got those more leathery brown sugary notes but definitely there are some kind of treacly and molasses notes in there some sweet caramel and also a little bit of a McVitie's digestive biscuity character as well you do get that out of this one but like I say it's quite a big sort of cakey chocolate brownie type vibe that you have in this one taking up the the dominant position in the malt base so yeah the way that this beer goes together is um, is absolutely lovely in that sense but yeah the bourbon barrel just sort of smoothens everything out and adds even more depth to it which is interesting i do get a little bit of an almost kind of like tobacco-y type note out of this one as i've said in a number of videos now we used to do a lot of stuff in the chemistry lab with tobacco you know toxicology labs and things like that and to this to me this beer just has a little bit of a kind of uh, tobacco-y type sweetness to it in a way i hate tobacco but i love the smell of it i have to say um so yeah, getting a little bit of that tobacco -y type quality out of it. It almost has that really kind of highly caramelised uh, cakey note to it as well. You know, that highly caramelised cakey stuff that sticks to the to the baking tray. It's got a little bit of that sort of vibe to it as well. And to me, there's actually just a little teeny hint of an almost slightly smoky character to this as well coming out. I can't remember if that was in the original, but who knows. Um, but yeah, I think that says everything that we need, or that, that completes everything that we need to say about the malty side of the beer and the barrel side of it too. So let's have a wee look at the hoppy and fruity side of things before we actually taste it. So yeah, for me, the hoppy side of this beer, um, you have to remember, of course, it is bourbon barley-aged and pure stouts are not the most hop forward of beer styles, but I think there is still a little bit of hoppy character to this one. There's a little bit of earthiness in there. There's a wee bit of floral character. And you also do have that little bit of um, of grassiness coming out of it too, which I think is um, is really nice. I think the, the grassiness and the kind of floral character goes together um, really well in this one. But yeah, you do still get a little bit of that lingering there. Obviously, the longer you keep this beer in the can, the more of that is going to drop out. And a significant portion of the, the green component will have dropped out already because of the barrel aging. So, yeah, think about that when you look at it. But I still think there's a wee touch of floral and grassy character to this beer for sure. Um, on the, um, the fruity side of things then, let's have a little look at that just to round off the aroma. For me... You do get a little bit of a, there is a little touch of raisiny sharpness to this one, but the, the fruity side of the beer is a little bit more kind of um, phenolic in things. So yeah, there's a little bit of a raisiny character in there, definitely a bit of plum underneath, but you have got that more dry, datey and kind of pruney character sitting in there as well. But a lot of um, that kind of phenolic cakey note as well. Um, definitely a wee touch of black berry. Well, not a wee touch, a bit of black currant, I was meaning to say. Some figs as well, for sure. And then... Yeah, and then you do have that big, sort of, sharper blackberry note on the front of the nose. But aroma-wise, I think this goes together quite nicely. As I say, I'm just a little bit surprised about the slightly dry, smoky note that I'm getting out of this one. So, yeah, that's quite interesting. But, yeah, as I always say... Take a wee bit of time to just uh, enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it is about time that we uh, we try this one and see what it's all about. So uh, yeah, let's see what this beer is going to have in store for us. So this one is the Nyctophobia Bourbon Barley's Edition brewed at Huli Bregri in Malmö here in Skåne in the south of Sweden as a sort of collaboration or cycle pipes release, I guess we could say. Uh, but yeah, let's crack into this one and see what we have. This is going to be pretty interesting. Slange, skull, cheers. Yeah. 
to say it's pretty nice it's actually got quite a good balance to it this one I was impressed with how well the original Nyctophobia was uh, was done I should say but this one just has a wee bit more kind of smoothness and things to it from what I remember it's definitely not quite as dry and of course it's it's just got that little bit more depth to the flavour which is good there was as I say nothing wrong with the original but experimenting with it and barrel aging it uh, with this with, with the quality of stout they had is definitely it's definitely something that should have been considered and it certainly hasn't gone wrong for sure that's it um but yeah this is for me proper old school russian imperial stout just with that little bit more kind of barrel complexity to it so it doesn't do anything surprising for the style category but it's just really nicely done so thumbs up to uh, the guys at julia uh for this beer really again quite impressive So yeah, where do we start with this then? One thing I will say about this is that after you take the second sip of it, it really just smoothens out very, very well. So that's definitely quite interesting. Um, yeah. So we'll start with the middle third of the palate then, as we often do. Um, so the backbone of that middle third of your palate, you've got that lovely smooth American oaky character that I was talking about there. So that just sits there in the middle of your palate but I will say that I'm actually doubting myself a little bit with this one um, because it does have a little bit of dryness to it as well and like I say it said on the untapped page that this was aged in spirit of fen casks and I really don't know if there I couldn't find anything about a bourbon released from uh, spirit of fen and of course bourbon is essentially an American spirit so yeah maybe spirit of fen have done their own um, bourbon these days and are, are doing their own bourbon these days and have their own bourbon casks their own oak casks which would likely be European oak but um, yeah I really don't get so much in the way of um, of kind of sweetness out of the oak in this which is quite interesting because normally you would get that from the more American oak but as I say anyway you have this lovely smooth kind of woody backbone but it just has that wee bit more European oaky type dryness there's a teeny little bit of vanilla toward the front of that middle third of your palate and then above that you start to get the kind of bourbon brown sugars it's not overly sweet in this one like American bourbon for me is always quite a sweet um, kind of affair but yeah you just get this kind of thin and almost crispy um, bourbon sugary layer on top of the wood but I think it's the dryness of the wood that kind of more dominates the flavour as you move further forward but yeah the bourbon barrel aging in this one does have quite an interesting effect because I remember this beer you do start to get more and more roasty toasty dry character out of this beer the further into the aftertaste that you go but it really does the, the bourbon barrel aging really does mellow this beer out quite interestingly so above that sort of brown sugary uh, the bourbon brown sugary layer that I was talking about you can feel a bit of that roasty toasty well fired bread crust and it's that for me that makes this beer like an old school Russian imperial stout but then above that you've got this dense kind of You've got this dense sort of like chocolate brownie kind of cakey layer that sits there. Um, you know, Swedish clad cake or the chocolate cake or the chocolate brownie. It really has that level of density to it. So roasty well-fired bread crust, the kind of dense cakey layer. And then above that, there is a little bit more of a slightly kind of sweet rye bread or wholemeal brown bready layer as well. But as you move further forward on the palate, you have a little bit of a more... Um, you have a little bit of a more kind of slightly nutty character coming out of this one, which is kind of interesting. But I remember the original uh, Nyctophobia having a wee bit more nutty character to it. This one, not so much. This beer, the more that you drink of it, you start to get that, you, you do get more of that kind of dense chocolate brownie, clad caca type thing coming out into the, uh, into the aftertaste. But yeah. As I say, it goes together really quite nicely. It 
So yeah, I like. I really do like how that um that goes together in this one. The sort of cakey notes out of the beer sweeten up a little bit, and I think you get a wee touch more vanilla out of this beer from the woody layer. The further into the aftertaste that you go, but like I say, you've got that cake, dense cakey layer. You've got the slightly kind of rye bready type layer, and then above that, you start to get the chocolate and the brown sugars. So toward the back of that um front third uh, the middle third of your palate sorry brain isn't working toward the back of that middle third of your palate you get the more kind of intense high cocoa chocolate like a sort of 80 90 percent cocoa chocolate it's very very dry actually as well it's almost slightly roasted but as you move further forward uh, across the middle third of your palate move toward the the border with the front third of your palate you're getting a bit more sweetness out of the chocolate it maybe transitions to be like a kind of 50 percent cocoa chocolate gradually because yeah you get that out of it but on top of that you've got the leathery kind of brown sugary layers coming out of the beer um, and that kind of forms the base as well so you've got that lovely leathery brown sugary note and then above all of that you've got the big highly caramelized treacle molasses type note out of this one which is kind of interesting So yeah, um, the sort of treacly molasses type notes in this one. Um, this beer, from the you, you get a little bit of that leathery character, but I don't think I just get the impression from this one it hasn't had that overly like an overly long wort boil, because you would have a little bit more leathery dryness in there. But above the chocolate layer, as I say, you've got like a little kind of cup almost, and the brown sugar sitting there. So you've got the leathery sort of base to it, then you've got a kind of treacle molasses type sort of thing. And then in the dead centre of your palate, you've got that sweeter caramelly note. So like I say, it is almost just like a little circle, but it's like a kind of cup at the same time. And then the kind of chocolatey and bready flavours just push up along the side of it. So yeah, that's definitely quite interesting. But you can feel the booziness in this beer, even at 11%. Um, it comes across very very smooth but you can still feel that this beer has a little bit of a punch to it which you always want when you're drinking a beer like this um, I think that covers everything we need to say about the, the middle third of the palate in this beer so let's have a little quick look at the back third of the palate and then we'll go on to the hoppy and fruity side of things so border region between middle and back third of your palate you get a little bit of that bready build up in there it is more of a kind of sweet like rye bready character that I'm getting out of that but then the base of the back third of the palate, you still have the woody character in there. It is a little bit drier, of course. And remember, as I always say, kind of sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palate, drier, more bitter flavours come out further back. So yeah, you've got the slightly drier woody character in there. You can feel the bourbon sugars on top, which in the end to me feel a little bit drier. And then you have a more sort of sponge cake. It's like a kind of chocolate sponge cakey character. On that back third of the palate sitting above that so a wee bit lighter and more airy then above that kind of almost chocolate sponge cakey layer you start to get a little bit of a kind of wholemeal rye bready type flavor too but as i say back third of the palate for me the flavors feel a lot more light and airy you don't have that big kind of cakey density in there that you had from the uh, the other parts of the beer so uh yeah Let's kind of uh, go above that as well to the yeasty side of things. But I think that covers the different layers of the back third of the palate. But above all of that, um, well, I guess on top of the kind of more wholemeal bready character, you get a little bit of a toasty, well fired kind of thing. And then you've got all of that, um, you've got all of that kind of um, yeasty character in there it's like a light more farmhousey brown bready character you get it's almost got a little touch of honeycomb to it. i always get honeycomb in the back third of the palate with these beers so, but definitely you can feel the back third of your palate the flavor is taller and as you come further forward it just condenses down as you go into the the middle third of the palate but i think we've covered everything we need to say about the yeasty and malty and barrel side of the beer let's go on to the hoppy and fruity side of things So yeah, on that hoppy um, side of the beer, like I said earlier, you know, you 
you can still get a little bit of hoppiness out of this one, but because it's barrel aged and it's an imperial stout, which is not such a hot forward style, it isn't quite as hoppy as it could be otherwise. But in the back corners of the palette, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there for sure. And as you move further forward, it's got a little bit of a herbal quality. But as you push further forward along the sides of the palette on this beer, I actually get a little bit more bitterness out of this one. It has got a little bit more of a kind of floral character to it. Maybe even a teeny little touch of pine resin just sitting there, which I don't remember getting overly much of in the, uh, in the original, to be honest with you. But then I have had that can for quite a wee a wee while I have to say but round the front curve of the palette you've got a little bit of a more um you have got a little bit of a more kind of grassy note to this one it's a bit more of an oily grassy character too but definitely some floral aromatic spice on the front corners of the palette and a more oily grassy type note there around the front curve of the tongue but yeah definitely a bit of hoppy character lingering in this beer which is interesting i didn't see how long they did they'd aged this one for incidentally but uh, yeah it'll probably be at least you know nine six to nine months something like that i would i would estimate but uh yeah i think that covers what we need to say about the green component let's look at the front third of your palette then and the fruity side of things so the border region between front third and middle third of your palette again you get a little bit of a, a kind of build up in there and i would say it's got a little bit of a more kind of um brownie type note to it a little bit of a chocolate brownie kind of quality then the base of that front third of your palette you've obviously got the smooth wood in there a little bit of the bourbon sugar and then maybe just a little bit of that kind of dense cakey quality but it's quite smooth and then you get the the kind of nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll the way out of the beer so let's look at that fruity side of things So yeah, the fruity side of the beer is kind of what I remember it being. Um, so on top of every, uh, well, I would say at the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of this kind of bready, it's like a kind of brandy soaked fruit loaf type thing. So you can feel that. Probably it's better to describe that build up between front third and middle third of your palate as being more like a kind of brandy soaked, cognac soaked bread type thing. So you've definitely got that going on. But above, right at the top level of the back half of the front third of your palate, you get a little bit of the raisiny sharpness, you get the plums underneath, but then you get the more dry fruity characters, the prunes, the dates, and the sultanas, and that kind of blends in with the, the sort of brandy soaked bread thing that I was talking about. But as you move further forward into the middle of that front third of your palate, you can feel the sultanas kind of linger there. Then you get a little touch of fig, and as you go into the front half of the front third of your palette, it's more like a kind of black currenty character underneath and a black berry sitting on top. So yeah, definitely getting a good little bit of that coming out in this beer. Um, so yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, um, is, is quite nice. As I say, a little bit of... Um, fig in the middle, a little bit of um, black currant as you move forward and then a bit of blackberry on the tip of the tongue. But uh, yeah, in terms of bourbon barley yeast imperial stouts, this one is quite nice. This has got a bit more kind of dry and roasty Russian imperial stout character to it. But we said that about the original beer anyway. But the bourbon barrel just adds a wee bit more kind of smoothness into the mix. And it's... Um, equally as good as the original actually um, and I've, I've enjoyed this one so it's, it's cool to see them experiment with this recipe which obviously is very very well done um, so yeah I'm curious to see what the actual whiskey barrel aged version of this one's going to be like as well because the, the Venn whiskey from what I remember is a little touch kind of uh, spicy and floral actually but yeah I think that covers everything we need to say about the flavour so we'll round off with a wee quick summary of the, the mouthfeel of this one then. So for me, this beer, it's full bodied. It's kind of toward the bottom end of full bodied, this one maybe pushing toward the mid range. But like I said, this beer has a real kind of smoothness and slickness to it. The carbonation is very, very smooth. You've got a lovely big kind of bitterness to it as well. I would think this beer 
and you know you've got the roasty toastiness and you've got a good bit of dryness it's quite easy to conflate that uh, to conflate those two things together you know the, the hoppy bitterness and also a roasty dryness so it's maybe got the equivalent of those combined of being like 60 IBUs something like that but the malt base as I say it's got roasty and toasty character underneath you've got a lovely little bit of smoothness in there and you've also got a wee bit of sweetness and a bit of dryness which I have enjoyed then you've got these lovely kind of um, juicy um, fruity characters as well it's got a little bit of the more dry fruity character underneath but then the more oily fruits on top and uh, yeah, definitely stylistically a more old school Russian imperial stout. But the bourbon barrel aging on this one has kind of mellowed it out and given it a wee bit more complexity. But regardless, I think this one is equally as good as the original. Just a little bit more kind of smooth and silky, I think. So uh, yeah, it's been really interesting to try this one. They've got a very good base stout in here that they can go and play around with. And uh, quite rightly, they will do that going forward. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This was the Bourbon Barrel East edition of Nyctophobia, an 11% Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels from, I believe, the Venn distillery here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. But regardless, very, very nicely done and a slightly smoother version of the original Nyctophobia from Hudia Brewery in Malmö. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed this review, I have to say. Let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Hudia Brewery. And we will return to these guys again very, very soon. Hopefully more Cycle Pipes reviews as well coming out. Slange it, Skull, cheers. See you guys in the next review.